Off to the sock here. Let me open up one of these Splunk servers and uh, do uh, some of the ones in section four. I don't think we need to do them all. But anyway, uh, what was the IP address of this desktop machine? We8105 desk. So, you start by looking for uh, events that include that name. That should be somewhere in there. So, I want that name. There's going to be a lot of them, so I'm going to sample for now. And then I want to go to all time. And so, these are events that mention that name. Um, search. There we go. All right. So, I found 1,700 events. Now, I'm going to go to the source field and explore stream sources that are used by uh, Active Directory. So, I go to source. And I'd like to have the stream data for um, LDAP. I don't see LDAP in this list because of my sampling, but I'll just use SMB and then change this to LDAP. Lightweight directory access protocol is what's used when you log into a Windows domain controller. So uh, now I can turn off the sampling and uh, find events on that day and look at their IP addresses. So there are 74 events and they're going to be on a certain day, 24 August 2016. So uh, this is 2416. Okay. So if I just look at the source of these, um, there's the destination. That's going to be the domain controller ending in 20. And this is going to be the source. So that is the IP address of this endpoint ending in 100. That's pretty common. So, all right. And um, then I'll just do a bit of this server. You can see the ransomware attack by looking for server in Suricata signatures. So you go to a clean search. And then go to data summary. And source types. And you'll find Suricata here. And the Suricata intrusion detection system did detect server. If you just search for server for all time, then you find five alerts from it. And this is where you can totally see the infection happen. So here at 9.49, the infection started and there were some alerts. And here it was done. And there's several questions you can answer by examining these events. You can find the uh, the signature that alerted the fewest number of times. You can and to find this one here, I'll mention. I think that's just. Uh, I think as far as I'll go with this demonstration today, I'll just answer questions after this because we're coming up to 7:30, 2:30. But anyway, um, so here, I want to f find these events. I want to find the events with onion domain lookup. And so you can see here, um, there is an alert um, signature here, there. So there's check-in, then there's another check-in. Those are the three events at the start. Here's the onion domain lookup. That's when it's done infected. That was the network traffic that loaded the ransom page, saying you're infected, you have to send bitcoins to this address. So this is when it ended at this time, 10, 15, 12.668. So you want to look, there was a lookup on the onion domain at this time to find it you click on this time and now go within one second of that time and now you can find all the dns events in this time so i don't want source type is suricata i want stream dns and um looks like i somehow oh wait yes i get rid of server there's no server in the dns all right there we go there we are. Now I had 16 DNS lookups within that period of, a, of one or two seconds. And if I just look at the query, I can see the domain names that were used. Here's the innocent one. There's the malicious domain. It has server in the name. So this is the uh, domain name that was used to fetch the ransomware ransom note. There's the domain. And here's the, uh, that's the fully qualified domain name. And uh, all right. And I think I'll just mention how to find this VB script. Uh, this is one a lot of students have asked me questions about in office hours. You look for a Visual Basic script. 
and exe, both at the same time, which are two things that aren't commonly together. So if you do that, and you might as well do it for all time, there's only 16 such events. And so down here, you will find, uh, for example, body shows information about processes being created. And if you just read through these, these are ordinary uh, messages. And one of these is obviously malicious. And there it is. This stuff here is obviously malware. It's got these crazy names, long uh, random letters for things. This is, I obfuscate stuff, the capitalization is all wrong. This is what malicious people do to hide their data. So this is the event you analyze to answer questions like uh, what function was in the malware, how long is the event. And to see the length is one thing you ask about. It turns out uh, the parent process command line is a useful field here. Um, there, parent command line. And see, this, this one has just the malware right in one field. And to get the length, let me see if I can do this one by, by um, memory. We had trouble figuring out the length, but I think it's pipe um, calc L equals, I might have to look this up, but I think it's length of parent command line. And then you want to put it out so you can pipe table, parent command, uh, table L. This might work. Let's see. Uh, looks like maybe it's eval. You people remember the lecture was it eval or calc? Uh, maybe it's eval. It's eval. Okay. Evaluate how you do the length of something. And now you can get the length of that to script. All right. Anyway. I think that's probably all this demonstration I need to do. I'm going to check for comments, and there are none, so I'll just stop this one.